Okay, guys, welcome to today's LFC Chats. I've got a legend with me today. His first time on the show. Hopefully, he'll be on again. Here he is, man like Matt from Team Coppish, the legend. Matt, how are you? I'm good, thank you, Dave. And listen, it's been a long time coming, mate, because you know what? We were supposed to do this last year, but it's my fault. I hold my hands up, but I'm here now, mate, and I'm just glad I can be here, bro. Trust me. Oh, so, yeah, no, thanks for having me on, bro. Ah, no problem. I've had Callum on once or twice. Um, I think Drift is the only one I haven't had on, um, but hopefully we can get him at some stage. But um, yeah, yeah. I was just saying to you earlier, you, you guys are flying at Team Coppage. Uh, yourself, Callum and Drifty. Oh, my God, you guys are taking the LFC world by storm at the moment. Whoa. When you say it like that, I mean, it sounds, <laughs> it sounds great. I mean, do you know what I'm saying? But no, do you know what? Thank you for that. And all I can say is this, man. Like, we just do what we do and we just hope people enjoy our content, man. That's all we're trying to do. It's, it's just for the people. And obviously, during this whole COVID time at the moment, we need to stick together more than anything. Do you know what I mean? All Liverpool fans and, and just football fans, they've around the world, to be honest with you. So, but no, I appreciate it, man. Thank you again, man, for having me on, man. No, absolutely. And I, and I actually think collaborations and collabs between... Never mind Liverpool fans, but even even Premier League rivals and stuff is the way to go. You've seen the bigger channels do it, and it seems to work, doesn't it? Different points of view and stuff. Yeah, definitely. I think um, if you think about some of the collaborations that I think people are doing now, I think people really appreciate these collabs because sometimes I think, you know, when things were kind of normal maybe a year or so ago, a lot of people were busy. It was hard to do a lot of collabs, whereas now, I think, let's be real, Dave, a lot more people have time on their hands to do things. Let's just, yeah. you know what I mean? And that's just because of circumstances. So it's mad how things pan out sometimes. Exactly. I mean, I, I've had a few interviews where I wouldn't have thought I would have got them, but a lot of the guys were telling me they're at home anyway. They're actually at yeah. home with their, with their laptops. So it suits perfectly. There, you, there you, know? you go. There you go, mate. There you go. Like I'm always, do you know what I mean, at home. Or if I'm not home, I'm, do you know what I mean, I'm out in the back. So I, I've got to work myself. But normally, do you know what I'm saying? I am at home, mate, because that's just what COVID's happened to us right now. That's what's been Home down. Is where the heart is, baby. Indeed, <laughs> indeed, bro, indeed. And um, before we get into the LFC uh, Liverpool stuff, uh, just some sad news this morning. Uh, if you heard it, uh, Ian St. John um, passed yeah. away, um, 82, uh, a bit of an illness he had. But uh, I always remember Ian St. John. I'm, I'm a lot older than I look, by the way, Matt. Um, back in the 80s with a St. and Greavesy show on a Saturday afternoon. I used to look forward to that. It was before the Premier League. It was before Sky Sports even took over. That was Jimmy, Jimmy Greaves and Ian St. John. That was the show for me and very sad. Yeah, I heard the news today, and, and again, I just want to send, like, obviously, my condolences, you know, to his family, and obviously, it's a shocking passing, Liverpool legend, you know what I mean, striker, he was a legend at our football club, and not even just that, it's more about, it's more about the man himself, isn't it? I think football yeah. comes, football comes second day, obviously, with things like this, and it's just a sad that we've lost, we've lost a real good one, man, do you know what I mean, and Thoughts some prayers again go out to his family and just everyone that that knows him and even the club as well. It's a horrible loss to take. So, oh, absolutely. And I mean, we've had a few of them. I mean, Alison's dad last week and uh, Klopp's mom a few weeks ago. I mean, we've we've had a really a really up and down season, as you know, on and off the field. So yeah. we get into Liverpool itself. Um, we eventually got the win on Sunday, two 0 against Sheffield United, which was yeah. which was nice. A little yeah. smile on everybody's face, I noticed, on Sunday and Monday. Um, but it wasn't perfect, I have to say that. I mean, to me, I did a video yesterday about it. To me, it was just getting the points. The job was done. It was a job. You needed to do it, and we did it. We kept the clean yeah. sheet, which was a bonus. But I think we're going to have to up our game, to be honest, Matt, if, if we're going to have to get out from Chelsea at Anfield on Thursday. So what did you think of the game on Sunday against uh, Sheffield? Yeah, it's sort of like the same thing as you, Dave, because... I look back at the game and think they had a couple of chances where if they took their chances, it could have been a completely different game. Yeah. And I just think we looked at that game and thought, do you know what? I even said it in the preview that we've done, right? All we need is the three points. I'm not really too bothered about the performance, but I will say this, though. Looking back at that performance, as you rightly said, we have to do better against Chelsea. If not, they will punish us because, again, defensively, we're still not great. Obviously, we got a clean sheet. But let's be real, Dave. If we played against better opponents, that could have been a completely different game, in my opinion. And that's what worries me a bit, is that yeah. we're still a work in progress. And yeah. to be fair, it's what to expect because we've got so many injuries. We've obviously got things happening around the club, as you've already touched on already, with Alisson as well. 
Um, obviously, Henderson's not injured as well. Um, Henderson, apparently, it could be about six weeks. We don't oh. know. Yeah, we don't know when Fabinho is going to come back. Potentially, he could be fit. We don't know again. Uh, Diego Jota was supposed to be playing uh, against Sheffield United. But again, he was ruled out because of illness. So there's a lot of things up in the air. And it's like, we, we're recording this right now. We could finish. We could finish recording, Dave. And before you know it, there's something else happens. That's what it's been like for us this season. It's been yeah. crazy. It's been yeah, crazy. It, I, I'm living in a pandemic. I mean, it's just throw everything in. Throw it in together and stew it around. It's like a big, lovely Irish stew. There's loads of stuff going on inside the bowl, you know. But um, Liverpool, as you say, but I mean, to be honest, Matt, I, I was a little worried when I seen the team sheets on um, Sunday with Adrian and goal and yeah. Back yeah, and Phillips. I was a little worried to be honest, even though Sheffield United are absolutely well, they're gonna get relegated, there's no doubt about it. But we just yeah. needed to do a job, we needed the points, we, we we didn't even need a performance, we just needed to win the game, and that's what we did, you know. But as I say, we're gonna have to up our game against Chelsea, could have Allison back, could have Fabinho back, and maybe yeah. Jota on the bench. But Jota's been a huge loss, I, I just can't wait to see that guy. What do you think of Jota? I mean. Unlucky with the injury, but he just gives us so much more going forward, and he gives us a chance to do something with the front three, break them up, and maybe give from the likes of Bobby a rest. Yeah, for me, Jota, I think has been the surprise of the season, and I think if you look at it as a whole, Dave, me personally, I would have said I thought Thiago would have maybe had the bigger impact, and I think it's for various reasons as to why Thiago hasn't had the impact yeah. that he maybe should have. That is, again, because of injuries around. So it's, it's people he's playing with, the system that we now have to slightly adjust. But for me, Jot has been sensational. Like he, before he got injured, Dave, yeah, he was arguably our player of, well, was in the running for player of the season. Let's be real. Like for us anyway, he was on yeah. fire. Like he couldn't stop scoring. Once he found his feet and got into our starting lineup, he was then causing an issue for Klopp in terms of who we should play. Should it be Bobby? Should, should it be uh, Jota? Should, should Mane get a rest? And that's the thing, Dave. The key thing with Jota is this. He's so good that for the first time in years, we were able to look at him and go, we can actually rotate our front three and know that the quality is still going to be high. That's the difference that Jota makes. He's that good, Dave. He needs yeah. to come back. He needs to come back. Yeah. I mean, even, even if even if he was on the bench and didn't come on against Jack, just to see him on the bench would give everybody a bloody lift, to be fair now, you know? Exactly. And I mean, if if, if Fabinho comes back, I'd have, to be honest, I'd have Fabinho in. I'd have Fabinho straight back in at the centre-half area. I really would, for experience, yeah. especially against Chelsea. Maybe Quebec beside him, although Phillips hasn't put a foot wrong. I think Phillips is very good the other night. Yeah. Do you know what? If I'm being honest with you, Phillips has really surprised me because yeah. I think I had a two out of Phillips and Kabak. Now, people say I've got an agenda, so I'm not going to go into it fully <laughs> now. You've already seen it, Dave, right? But I'm going to go on the basis of this. We've seen what Fabinho's done against Chelsea already when he played at centre-half, albeit he was next to Van Dijk, right? But as you said, when if and when Fabinho comes back, I want him to come back at centre-half because yeah. I do think he's a leader when he needs the back. And whether that's playing alongside Kabak or whether it's playing alongside Davis, we haven't even seen yet, or alongside Phillips, I don't mind, but as long as Fabinho's there, because we need that like that insurance blanket at the back. Do you know what I mean? We need that that security. So for me, Fabinho's got to come back into the lineup, mate. He has to come back. Um, I think it's going to be a stretch if he doesn't come back soon to keep playing the centre half that we have, even though they've yeah. done well. I just think against bigger, bigger and better opponents, we might come unstuck. Oh, absolutely. I think we would come on stuck, to be honest. If we played the same team against she against Chelsea, but that's with Adrian and those two said, I think we could be in trouble. I really do. Yeah. But um, listen, I mean, it, it's been a crazy season. It's still going to be a crazy season till the end. It really is. It looks like City are going to walk away with the league, possibly the domestic treble. I know they want the Champions League. Where did he get, yeah. get that or not? That's a, that's a toss of the coin. I don't know. They're, they're favourites. They'd be up there. there I mean, we're still in it. We're still in it. Yeah, I mean, we we are, against yeah. Leipzig next. You never know, Matt. You just never know. It's when we true. won at No Five, we hadn't got the greatest team in the world. Remember, you know. No, that's you never true. Know. That, possible, no, it's possible. Possible. It is possible. Listen, with the Champions League, yeah. Dare I say it? It's a little bit like a lottery, a little bit. Yeah. Because yeah. it depends who you get in the next round, and it depends on you know what I mean on a, on the two legged thing as well. So. The consistency doesn't have to be as good as when it's in the Premier League, in my opinion. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. we're in with a chance. But again, for me to sit here and say 
we've got a very good chance. I would have to say to you, Fabinho has to be fit at least for the rest of the Champions League campaign. And we have a way better chance of doing something in the Champions League. In my opinion, anyway. I and think he's Jota. Key. If, if and we can keep Fabinho and Jota there, I think we'd have a chance. 100%. And even as well, like, dare I say it as well, Nabi Kea, who you know I'm a massive fan of. Dave, Nabi yeah? lad! Listen, <laughs> Nabi lad. Hashtag Nabi. Nabi if Nabi <laughs> can stay fit. But again, Dave, it's about staying fit. If he stays fit, Dave, then again, it just adds, it adds options to what we have. Because right now, let's be real, Dave, we can't really rotate that much because of the amount of injuries that we have. No. And no, just have no. even Ox as well. I think Ox um is, is Ox even back? Is he back? No, he didn't see Ox. To be honest, now Nabi Kader, what when we signed him from Leipzig, I, I knew all about him because we signed him and then let him stay at Leipzig for a season before we yeah. it was part of the deal. But I was watching him playing for Leipzig at the time, going, Oh my god, look at the I, I'm sure you watched him. Every game he nearly got mad at the bloody match. He either got yeah. sent off. He scored a goal. He made a goal. He was like a little terrier running around. I was saying, what a perfect addition to what we had at Liverpool. Now, injuries have caught up him, but I still think there's a chink there. I know Klopp loves him. I still think there's a... We spent a lot of money on him, Matt, now. I think it was 60 plus million. It was a lot of money. I still think he can do a job for us if he stays fit. And I mean, he would get injured playing FIFA on a bloody PlayStation. (laughs) That's how... You know what I'm saying? He would get injured. That's the problem. We we got to stop Nabby getting injured. We got to get him on the pitch. And I think that's the key you just said. Jota, yeah. Fabinho, Nabby lad, those three can stay fit as much as possible between now and the end of the season. We Not only do we have a top of getting into the top four, chance of getting into the top four, but we have an outside chance of the Champions League. Definitely. I think you, that is spot on. Those three players there, they stay fit. We've got a great chance. And again, we don't want to use excuses, Dave, but let's just call it how it is. This season, have, we have had the worst injury like I have ever seen. Like, like ever seen. Like in, in Premier League history, dare I say it. Because, Dave, we started off the season with three centre-backs and one uh, emergency centre-back in Fabinho. Mate, they all got injured. Like, if I told you to start of the season, yeah, Dave, what if I said about getting injured? You're going to be like, Matt, like, come on, where's your positivity? But yeah. look what's happened. Yeah. This, this yeah. is crazy. This is like, magic. people give out, people give out to FSG for not buying a centre half when we sold Lovren. But when you go back to when they sold Lovren, as you just said, we had three centre halves. We did emergency centre half. We even in the back of his mind, he probably said Henderson could still play centre half. And we the young Reese Williams and we Phillips. Throw them all into a pot and you're saying, there's no way half of them are going to get injured or maybe four yeah. of them are going to get out for the rest of the season. I mean, that's just, that's twilight zone stuff. That's crazy stuff. And that's what it we've is. been living in, the twilight zone. Liverpool have been in the twilight zone this that's season. That's true. It. <laughs> that is true. That is so, yeah, you couldn't have said it any better. And it's just frustrating because, you know, you look at the start of the season, you think, you know what, let's be real. The squad that we have, I generally think we can still win. We're, we, we, I thought we were favourites, personally. When Before the ball was kicked and I saw the, the, the signings that we had, I said, listen, it's going to be us or City, but I'm still putting us ahead of them. Yeah. Because I'm yeah. confident in terms of what we can do now that we've got these added players to what we have at our disposal, yeah? But, mate, it just hasn't happened. As you said, Twilight Zone, we've just been living in it and we just can't get out of it. It's just, it's just horrible. Every day you wake up, Dave, I look at my phone and I'm expected to see something like somebody's out. I, I don't even like looking at my phone sometimes in the morning, Dave. Do you know that? That's how bad I, it's got. I, I, our, injury, our injury problem at Liverpool is so bad that I'd be afraid I'm going to get injured doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's, it's yeah. infectious. It's crazy. No, it's, it's true. absolutely crazy. <laughs> it's so true. That is so true. It's absolutely mad, mate. And, and again, like, we just got to hope that this stuff now comes to an end. It's got to end at some point, Dave. Surely it has to. Because yeah. if it doesn't, then flipping on, man. We're in for a long ass ride. Yeah, so. yeah. But listen, the way you look at it, we'll end this, this chat on a bit of positivity. I mean... We still get an outside chance. I think we have a decent chance. You look at the fixture. If we get over this Chelsea, this is a big hurdle, Chelsea game. Then we Fulham, and we can probably get into the quarters of the Champions League. Everybody's happy. Everybody's back. You know, get a few players back. Keep a yeah. few players fit on the pitch. We've still got a bit of optimism going forward, I think. And then try to get everybody ready and rock and roll for next season. Definitely. I think 
this Chelsea game is massive because yeah. they're a point ahead of us and I think West Ham are two points ahead of us, right? So yeah. we need to win this game. We're level on. I think we played the same amount of games as Chelsea, but I think West Ham may have a game in hand and yeah. maybe even Everton. Because Everton as well, I hate to call them out, but they're, if I'm not mistaken, they're having a level on points of us and they've got a game in hand. So game in hand, yeah. yeah. Massive. Like, we have to win this day. If we lose this game, we're in serious trouble. Yeah. But I'm not thinking like that, Dave. I'm thinking we're going to beat them because I think yeah. Liverpool, they just, they just got to do it, Dave. That's all I can say. They've got to do it. They can do it. If yeah. we turn up, we will beat them. But it's one of those things where, Dave, it's like we've been there before where we fought against the bigger team. We would turn up and we didn't. We, we've had some good results. Don't get, me, don't get me wrong. Obviously, we beat Spurs. Do you know what I mean? But again, we got hammered by City. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So, but Chelsea, but as you City. said, as you said, we were in that City game. You have to look back at that City. We were in that game up until the 72nd, 73rd minute. I think 4-1 flattered them. It has to be said. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. it could have went either way at 1-1. It could have went either way at 1-1. And it didn't. It went their bloody way. And then the quick fire goals, game's over. And then yeah, Alisson, Alisson's head was gone anyway. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. He said it was gone. He said it was gone. You know what I mean? That. Goals change games. You know what I mean? Goals change games. That's the way. Look at Leicester City. We were all over Leicester City. We went 1-0 up. And we're losing 3-1. If, yeah. if, you went, if you went out at 1-0 to the shop and came back at 3-1, you wouldn't be... That's Twilight Zone football. That's dreamland. I mean, that's just the way the season's gone, as you just said, Matt. But I think yeah. I think there's optimism there. I, I think Fabinho is key for, to start against Chelsea. I think we've have, we'd have a chance of beating them. Yeah, definitely. For me, I'm hoping to see Fabinho in that yeah. starting lineup because, I, and I think as well, if he if he's in that starting lineup, I think Klopp puts him in a centre back. You know, because I, even though I, Klopp, I would, I would, yeah. Because even though, again, like the guys haven't necessarily done anything wrong per se, but you can still see like mistakes that have happened in games, but it hasn't cost us. You've still seen times when, for example, someone's been outpaced. And yeah. you know what I mean? Even the other day when I think it was like McBurney or one of them was like clean for a goal, but luckily Adrian ran out and I think the ball came off him and we got a bit lucky as we do yeah. with Adrian. So with Fabinho there, you kind of just think, that might stop, or at least he can kind of calm calm us down a bit at the back. Do you know what I mean? The way I look at it, we, I think we were, we've got a little chink of luck against Sheffield United. It has to be said in one or two situations, which we weren't getting in games. So maybe the luck has changed. Maybe the, you know, the gods of, of luck have, have shown on Liverpool a little bit more because in the last six months, we've probably got two or three years of injuries and two or three years of bad luck all mixed into one. Yeah, definitely. Because, I'm again, I have never seen injuries like this, ever. Like, the whole back line is just literally, what, all the centre-backs are gone, and then the emerging centre-backs are gone. That's crazy. And no. I'll be real, Dave, if this happens to any other team in world football, they are not coping. That's why when people say it's excuses, it's not an excuse, it's called fact. Any team in world football, whether it's uh, Man City, Bayern Munich, uh, Real Madrid, if you take out all their main centre-backs, then you want to take out their um their substitute centre backs, their their DMs, which yeah. will be for us Henderson and Fabinho, they're not coping, Dave. They're just not. Let's be real, they're not. So it, to be honest, it's not even that we lost Van Dyke, who's probably the best centre half in the world. What we lost in Van Dijk is it, it's calmness at the back, but it's also control. He controls most of the game from the back, taking it out, you know, knowing what to do. Allison behind him's going, well, I have Van Dyke in front of me here. You know, there's no, no need to worry even. And even the yeah. guys in the middle don't have to worry as much as, say, Thiago does. He's playing out position and he's probably defending more than he should be because he, that's not really his game. So there's been so many bloody issues that I, I think in the long term we'll be okay. So I, I, I'm... Well, I'm not happy at the moment where we are, but I mean, we, we've, yeah. we've had a lot to deal. We've had a lot to deal with, Matt. But I think going forward, we'll be okay. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be right. And I think, and and again, I just want to touch on the Van Dijk thing because you're right. With Van Dijk, it's not just about you know how good he is as a player, so to speak, like the skill set. It's more about, as you said, the leadership. Yeah. Dave, I didn't even go as far to say the aura of the man. When other teams look at Virgil Van Dijk, they actually like, oh, mate, Virgil Van Dijk's playing today. We've kind of lost that kind of like yeah. that gladiator that they all look at and they go, oh, this is going to be a long day today with Van Dyke in the back. Do you know what I mean? He yeah. is so key. Absolutely. He's so key there. He's like, basically, him and Henderson, for me, are the two people on the pitch that have that aura about them where yeah. they just like, we're not losing today, lads. It's them two for me. Yeah. 
No, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. But um, unfortunately, well, well. Hendo's a few weeks away. I, I don't even know whether he'll he might come back in April or May. But and Van Dijk's obviously. I don't want him rushed back. To be honest, I I don't want. Yeah, I, I know that. I leave him alone. Let him yeah. get his pre bloody season. I don't want him playing for Holland anyway. I don't. Yeah. Want, I don't want him being fit and playing for fucking Holland and getting injured. <laughs> Same here, mate. I don't listen. I don't want to see him in the US at all. Let him rest because you know what they're gonna do, Dave. They're gonna be like, listen. And again, as the player, he may be thinking, well, it's my country and this is this is a big thing. So, yeah. But again, this is where I will say if your if your country really cares about you and they can see you're not fit, just leave him and let him yeah. rest. But we kind of know that's probably not going to happen. This is football. And well, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, an money, it's a money. Please. And unfortunately, as you say, it's yeah. a business. But the other thing about it is it'd be nice for Van Dijk to come back in the Champions League final <laughs> and lift number seven. Now, that would be yeah. a dream ending Mate, to the season, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would be special. Imagine that. Imagine winning the Champions League and doing it for Virgil. Do you know what I mean? And oh. even like for, for Klopp as well, the loss of his mum, for Alisson, the loss of his dad. Like Winning the Champions League for us this season would be absolutely massive when you consider what we've had to go through. So... Listen, Dave, let's hope and pray that we can get number seven because that would be sensational, bro. I'm telling you. Absolutely. Well, Matt, I'm going to leave it there. That was absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much for coming on. As I say, Team Coppish, check them out on YouTube. I'm sure you know who they are at this stage, but I'll leave your link down below. Maybe we can do it again sometime. I really enjoyed it, bro. Definitely, definitely. Well, of course we'll do it again, mate. Of course, bro. And thank you for having me on, man. Much appreciated, man. And thank you for the love, as always, my bro. Thank you. Hey, stay safe, bro. Same to you, man. Take care, man. Talk to you soon. Bye.